And one of those attendees is joining us now. I have Paul Richards here. Hello, Hello. Paul. Uh, would you be able to introduce yourself, explain where you've come from today? Yeah, sure. So I've come all the way from Canberra in Australia. Uh, it was um, many, many hours of flying, but I'm really glad to be here. Um, an incredible conference. And um, so my role is the Director of Communications and Outreach at the Academy of Science. <laughs> And yeah, so you're, you're not a research scientist, you're much more interested in the questions of how we can communicate science beyond the bubble where, where we conventionally speak about it. Yeah, absolutely. So my background is actually mainstream media. I worked in uh, television for 15 years, worked in radio for several years before that. And so really I joined the Academy to establish a video team to try to engage the unengaged, people who don't normally uh, think of themselves as interested in science. And I think we've been quite successful in doing that. We've grown our online audience from 9,000 to 2 million within two years. Um, and so we've now really, within my team, combining mainstream media professionals with science communicators and working out how do we actually reach the unengaged. So how, I mean, I suppose there's not one way to reach such a diverse audience. When we yeah. say the unengaged, we're actually talking about many different people. Absolutely. But if you were to boil I suppose it down to kind of what you yep. prioritise in your work. Yep. Yeah, what are you focusing on? So there are three things that we focus on. Um, I've done a lot of thinking about this. Um, quality, trust and reach. Um, so the, the quality side of things comes from that combination of mainstream media professionals who can make engaging content, um, combining with the science communicators. Um, also the trust actually comes from the fact that our content is reviewed uh, by many, many people before it's published anywhere. So any video that we produce uh, is checked off by the person who appears in the video as well as an independent expert in the field. And then the Academy actually has an oversight committee of five fellows who have to make sure that they're satisfied uh, that the content is of an excellent quality before we publish it. So that we actually publicise the fact that that's the level of review that we go through. And I think that's one of our strengths. And it's actually establishing that trust with the audience, which I think is key uh, to growing an audience. And the reach aspect of it, it really is, um, as, as your audience grows, you're able to reach more people who are able to share the content to their friends, their family. Uh, and so, yeah, it just uh, multiplies from there. Now, here at Falling Walls, you're actually doing some work with Falling Walls Engaged. That's correct. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, I, you, Falling Walls Engage is an opportunity for people to present their approaches to science communication. What was it like to judge, I suppose, what must have been very diverse approaches to essentially the same problem? I, I mean, I love the fact that we've got uh, presenters from all over the world trying to achieve the same goal of having pe the, the public engage with science uh, and embrace it. We're all one world, we're all, you know, and breaking down the walls of of elitism within science and that actually it should be accessible by anyone. And so a lot of, I saw a lot of those sorts of approaches, but a diversity, a great diversity of ideas. And I think that's what it takes, right? There's no one answer to this problem. It takes lots and lots of different ideas and the sharing of those ideas. So that was my big takeaway from yesterday. How, how do you tell if any idea is successful, that if any idea really is not only reaching outside that bubble, but actually helping people understand science in their everyday lives and maybe even incorporate science into their everyday lives. Yeah, I think um, I was really looking for uh, projects that um, established relationships between the people they were trying to reach with the project themselves or the scientists who were involved in that project. And I think that was the key. Um, you know, there were lots of different categories that we were looking at to try to decide which were the best projects, what was the impact, what was the novelty factor. But what I was looking for over and above all those things was which were the ones that were establishing that connection. Uh, and, it, and it is um, a difficult thing to define, but uh, once you see it, you know it's there. So, mm, now here at Falling Wars, the aim is to reach, I suppose, beyond these more conventional audiences. Do you think that is uh, that something that is achievable through kind of a day of conference or is that something that other methods kind of yeah, are look, more I mean, naturally I, um, aligned to? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, a conference is a great place for people who are trying to build those connections to share ideas and to network and, and I think there is strength in numbers. So the more of us that are working on these problems together and not reinventing the wheel every single time, uh, the more effective we're going to be. So I don't think the conference in and of itself is going to achieve that. But certainly, it, I mean, the talks, uh, subtopics of the conference, uh, as well as the competition, all works together to make those connections. And I think 
those of us who are attending are all in the business of trying to establish those connections more widely in the community. So it's terrific for that. Paul, thank you so much for speaking with us. My pleasure. Enjoy the rest of your conference. Thanks very much.